Well, hi there, everyone. Welcome to another Cardwell's Cauldron here on the Geektopia Island. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. And today we're going through a weird deck because we need to use it before it all goes away because rotation's about to happen. So we thought we'd well, you know, bring up a little silly fun deck for you. But of course, before we go ahead and do that, we'll go ahead and remind you that we do have a Patreon. If you go ahead and just give us a dollar to support us, we'd love you very much. It only takes that much to do so. And hopefully see us grow and become better and do all the fun stuff. For show, for show. Now with that, let's get into the deck name. And it's Mystic Saga. Kind of bland, but it kind of works out for everything here. Because first we're going to talk about this rare called Starfield Mystic that no one probably knows about at all that existed in the next in the last set. It's a creature. It's a one and a white. It's a 2-2. Two, two. Enchantment spells you cost, uh, cost one less to cast. Whenever enchantment you control is put in the graveyard from the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Mystic Saga. So it's kind of weird. It's like, why do you want to play en uh, enchantments that go in the graveyard? Well, there's a reason, because we have Sagas. And we will go ahead and get into that later, but it really works out with this guy, so we'll see what happens there. And all the other cards are just help to support everything around there. Yep. First up is our uh, fun little girl, Tragic Poet. Mm -hmm. One white for a 1-1, one, one, you sacrifice him, return target enchantment card from graveyard to your hand. Yeah. Saga's down, it gets a counter, you can play this, tap it, get it again, and just replay it and see how that goes. Now this is a very uh, limited all-star back in the day. It's Relic Runner. One and one blue, two one. When it, it can be blocked, if you cast a historic spell this turn, which there is a crap ton of. So hopefully you just keep on swinging for two, no matter what. I like it. Next up is Rona, the Disciple of Gix. A blue, black, and one for a two, two. She's a legendary creature and she enters the battlefield. You may exile target historic card from the graveyard, from your graveyard. Yeah. You may cast non-land, non non card exiled with Rona and then pay four, tap, exile the top card of your library. Yeah. So therefore, she also helps you recast those sagas again over and over. And this is a weird mix of a deck. I'm not sure whether it's aggro or tempo or what at the moment. So I feel like the long game is really secure once you can get there. But besides that, we'll see. Yeah, this deck does seem like a lot of setup. Oh yeah. But I think it'll be really good. I hope so too. And to help with that is uh, <clears throat> Raph Capuchin, Capuchin uh, Ship's Mage. Two white, blue, three, three, flying flash. You may cast historic spells as though they had flash. So legendary dudes and all your sagas for flash. T solid. S seems good. Next up, Tishar, Ancestor's Apostle. One white and three for a two, two legendary flying bird. And uh, he's got the flying mans. Yep. Whenever you cast a historic spell, return target c creature card with convert mana cost three or less from a graveyard to the battlefield. Yep. This help gets Mystic, Runner, Poet, and even Rona to help you just keep going back and forth constantly over and over. Yeah, so, pretty cute. Yeah, so hopefully you're able to get card advantage without actually drawing cards. Pretty much is what I want to happen. Mm -hmm. And of course, we'll get into the spells now. The first one I must have because you might as well, if you make yeah. your enchantments cost smaller, you might as well have protection, right? God's willing, one white, instant. Turn creature you control, gain protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. And you get to scry one. It's ridiculously overpowered and I love it. Card's super good. Yeah. It'll pretty much always be used if we're playing white. Exactly. Next up, Triumph of Gerard. One white and one for a saga. First, the one and two are the same. You put a one one counter on target creature you control with greatest power. And then three, target creature you control with the greatest power gains flying, first strike, and lifelink until the end of turn. Yeah. So hopefully, to be honest, we hopefully have the rogue that gets this counter because two is pretty much the average number of creature power. And be able to do this, make it unblockable, swing for three, and then just keep making it unblockable and swinging. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Next one, of course, is History of Benalia. Because, yeah. yeah, that's why not. One white, two, or two white and one. The first two chapters are the same. So create a 2 2 white knight creature token with vigilance. And then the third chapter, knights you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. It's good. So hopefully to be able to like turn two mystic, turn three banalia with God was willing for backup, seems good. That's the dream ideal thing to do for sure. Yeah, for sure. Next up is Prison Realm. One white and two for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, exile target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls, and Prison Realm leaves the battlefield. When Prison Realm enters the battlefield, scry one. Yeah. This is just more control because we need it. And it's an enchantment, so it costs one less. And you scry. Yeah. So why not? Now, this is one of my old-time favorite sagas for sure is Time of Ice. 
It's three and a blue. It has the first two chapters the same as always. Uh, tap target creature and opponent controls. It doesn't untap during its controller's untap step for as long as you control time of ice. And the third one, return all tap creatures to their owner's hand. Just that, just that simple. Tap two dudes down. Maybe with Raph, it's instant speed. Maybe with Mystic, it's turn three, tap a dude down. So already you're gaining, you know, momentum. And then, yeah. And if you time it right enough with a tragic poet and one in the graveyard, you just keep doing it. It's pretty silly. <laughs> just keep going back and forth. Yeah. And the fact that, of course, uh, it makes them not want to swing because the old tap creatures go away, not just the ones it's tapped down. Yeah. And the next one we got is the Eldest Reborn. Yeah. It is a black and four. The first uh, first one is each opponent sacrifices a creature or one or planeswalker. Second one, each opponent discards a card. And the third one, you put target creature or planeswalker a card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Yes. So it's just extremely powerful in that way. Like Eldest Reborn is a very it's not, it hasn't been used in forever, but every time it is used, it just changes the battlefield Yeah, it, forever. it changes it real, real good. Yeah, to be able to take their Teferis or anything of their nature, just be like, cool, thank you, that's mine now. And to be able to get back the Tragic Poet, oh, so good, or Rona, yeah. just to keep casting it like that, super fun. That is it. This is a really, like, super solid package of hopefully just constant enchantment and saga abuse. And hopefully it works out, and then your star field's super big, and you just keep swinging. It sounds pretty good. Oh yeah, we we do have 24 lands to hopefully get there because everyone keeps yelling at me. But we do have the S for colors, so Drowned Catacombs, Glacial Fortress, Godless Shrine, Hollow Fountain, uh, Isolated Chapel, and Watery Grave. Of course, we got all those. Uh, temples I feel like are too slow at the moment for three colors, so only use them for two I think. And then we have one of each basic because why not? Because you still need basics. You still need basics. I feel like that's it. Well, that and looks pretty solid. It looks solid on paper. I can't wait to actually try it on the brawls, at, which you probably have seen. Hopefully it works out for us. And with that, hopefully you enjoyed your stay here at Geektopia Island. Goodbye. Later. Also, guys, we just remind y'all to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to keep up to date on all the future content, make sure you click that bell. It will give you all the notifications you need. With that, we'd like to go ahead and give a big thank you to all our fans that support us through the year, and especially our Patreon support people. Uh, we do like to give a shout out to our Mythic and Above uh, supporters, and that would be Dwayne Higgs. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. We love you.